Stay tuned to the end of the episode for a list of resources for the trans community, including some legal resources and recommended books. If you're listening to this podcast on one of our audio channels, head to either our Patterson Park Podcast Facebook group page or useventphotos.com slash podcast, and we'll list the resources there. Thanks. Enjoy the podcast. How you doing? I'm Mike Gaddy and welcome to the 743 Patterson Park Podcast. This week I got to sit down with one of my favorite friends from high school, Miles Imler. But in high school, I didn't know Miles as Miles because in high school, Miles was a young lady. But that's not quite right, is it? Because in high school, Miles was a young man but to the world and biologically, he looked like a young lady. And Miles knew in his heart that he was a young man. And that disparity, growing up and growing up trans, was a completely different experience for Miles than even for me, who grew up as a gay man. So, I didn't really realize when I decided to tackle this, this series on growing up trans and being trans in the Baltimore, Washington metropolitan area in the 80s and today, I didn't really realize how huge a subject it was and how complicated and how everything, every turn you can go around you can run into a language barrier or say the wrong thing or or inadvertently be insensitive to someone who is going through being trans or being gay or being bisexual or queer. And what does queer mean? That's the Q in LGBTQ+. And those letters, don't they seem to change a lot? It's a complicated subject. And I want this series, when I was sitting down with Miles, I want this series to be be kind of a... a, a a warm-hearted explanation of what it's like to be trans, what it's like to be gay, what it's like to be in these circumstances for people who might have a gay member in their family, a gay brother, a gay friend, or someone trans in their family, and they don't know quite quite how to how to react and how to be and how to be sensitive to that person and what they're going through. So please Sit back, put on your headphones, put in your contacts, sit down with me as I talk to Miles Imler, one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. You know, we were best friends in high school. I know. Uh, and, and yeah. I, you know, um, then <laughs> lost touch after high school. And mm-hmm. then about, I don't know, five or six years ago, it seems to me, I, I have no concept of time. You you messaged me on um, Facebook and we're like, yeah. oh, you know, I I we had we were we went to high school together and you were one of my best friends and like this big long message. Yeah. And, and yeah. I, had no idea. I know. <laughs> I had um, I'd gone into autopilot because I was sending messages to everybody. I was doing the whole coming out thing. And that all came about because I was about to do, you know, change my name on Facebook and I had to have it make sense for people so that they would figure out what was going on. And I didn't want to just spring it on them. And, and uh, so that's kind of why I just contacted you and, and other people sure. and, and explain my situation. But I remember when you're telling me that I forgot to tell you right. who I was. Well, and I'm like totally ADHD. Oh, yeah. And this was like 10 paragraphs yeah. long. And it was like really emotional. You could tell it was heartfelt. And I was like, 
I, who is this? <laughs> and I didn't want to write back and say, who are yeah. you? Because, you know, it was this like super <laughs> passionate, you know, heart yeah. from the heart thing. So I ignored it like I do when yeah. I, <laughs> I right. know what else to do. So I, <clears throat> I messaged you back and I said, look, I'm really sorry. It, it's just not ringing a bell. And, yeah. and then, um, then we've had occasion to talk a couple of times and just very recently uh, to do background for the podcast. Yeah. And, and when we talked, it was like we had never not talked. I, I, that's, what, that's what friendship, real friendship is. Yeah. You know, you don't have to worry like, oh, I have to do this. I have to do this to keep keep it going and you know you can just leave for years and come back and it's like time stood still or barely passed well that's how this was like yeah. you know that 30 year yeah. gap between 1987 when we graduated from high school oh i shouldn't say that <laughs> go, go. I, i'm gonna mention <laughs> i'm gonna mention the year that we we were teenagers anyway, the year, you know, the decade, the eight, I have to reference the decades. So we knew each other in high school. We went to prom together, not like together, together. You went with, with somebody and I went with somebody and then we like double dated if my memory is serving correctly. And my mom was like all super excited because she got to photograph you and your date as the first gay couple she ever got to photograph. So, uh, so her and my friend Pat got walls. So you probably don't remember who's an artist was like, when I mentioned your name, she was like, oh, oh my God. <laughs> you know? Oh, I can't oh wait to you know, reconnect because you were, even then you were inspiring to them, you know, just in wow. going about your daily life. And like, you've always had this, look, this is who I am, deal yeah. with it smile on your face, you know, kind yeah. of, kind of approach. And it's, uh, and, and both my mom and my friend Pat, Wow. Or like, oh God, I can't believe you're reconnecting with, with Miles. That one of our favorite yeah. people ever. Both Aww. of them said that independently. Wow. First things first, for those of you who, for those people who don't really know the difference between all of the LGBTQ plus letters, <laughs> including me, right. uh, what is trans? When, when you say I am a trans person, what do you right. mean? Okay. Well, first, Let's define the majority of the population, which is cisgender or non-transgender. Now, cisgender folks are the people whose sex assigned at birth matches their gender identity. The term transgender is an umbrella term which describes all gender variant individuals whose inherent sense of their own gender does not match the sex they were assigned at birth. Although the word transgender and our modern definition of it only came into use in the late 20th century, people who fit this definition have, ex have existed in every culture throughout recorded history. Question for you. Yes. When you say that our, the gender that we're born with doesn't match the gender, our biological gender, I, I, I'm paraphrasing, do you think that that is on a continuum? Do you think most people, like, let's say one is male and 10 is right. a female. Do right. you think, I mean, I know that there's the gender fluid people who sometimes identify in one and they kind of swing back and forth. You know, um, do you think that gender is as finite as male, female, or trans? It depends on the person. Some people are gender are strong in their gender identity. They can be strongly male. They can be strongly female. And then there are people who are gender fluid and their identity can, can change over time. It can be a day. It can be a week, years. For, uh, let's say you're a 40 year old man. And yeah. for, four, for 38 years, you have never really thought about it. You identified as I'm a guy, I'm a right. male, I'm biological. And then something happens, you know, that you start to question that, you know, well, maybe I don't feel like I'm a hundred percent only a male. Maybe I'm starting to feel like I have gender traits that are female. Okay. Can't that screw in today's society with people's brains just a little? And how do you, how do you cope with that? Absolutely. Older people 
are still trying to grasp what transgender is, they would, they're set in their ways. They have their beliefs. They're more stubborn that way. Those are going to be the people who will be the hardest to, you know, to educate if they would even be open-minded enough to listen. Yeah. A younger minded person probably may even know people who are gender fluid, uh, may have already read information about it, but they are more open minded. They probably would be more apt to understand or be or open minded to it to listen and, and follow it, especially if they have liberal views and are more educated and are more accepting of lgbtq people so so but, matthew and i and i just want to bring home this point because i don't think a lot of this surprised me a couple of years <laughs> yeah. because i woke yeah. up realizing that it wasn't as binary as we we meaning your my, our generation was yeah. taught you know and so Matthew and I were shooting Harlem. In, in Harlem, a uh, Harlem Pride, ha Harlem Gay Pride. And right. we were shooting for a government group called Act Against AIDS. And um, it, there were a lot of transgender people there. And I could, I could not tell the person who I was photographing, I couldn't tell whether they were male or female. And so the proper thing I was told to do is just go up to them and ask, how do you gender identify? That's you right. Know? Right. Okay. Yeah. So that person responded, today, I am female. And that, uh, you know, I, mm -hmm. I'm, I am who I am. <laughs> and I said, well, does that mean tomorrow you might gender identify as a man? And he said, oh, she said, yes, tomorrow I may wake up and think, mm, I'm a boy today. She said, I am gender fluid and really go between the two. And that right. is something that I had never considered up until that point. And that was only a few years ago. How it, and I guess that's what really created in my mind, this realization that there is not a binary, that people are not born male or female, but in a continuum and they can move throughout that continuum throughout their life. Am that's I exactly, right? No, you, you are exactly right. In fact, continuum is interesting that you said that because that's the word that my therapist mentioned on gender for people that it is on a continuum and how so, how you know, has that thinking changed with modern modern meaning in the last few years versus when you were growing up well it's it's an all new language i we really thought that gender was either pink for girl, blue for boy. Uh, we didn't know about transgender. The word wasn't even invented yet. Um, the word that we knew for transgender was transsexual. Right. Some people are uncomfortable with the word. I'm not. I'm perfectly fine for it. Um, it's a clinical term. It's dated, but it's not offensive to me anyway. Transsexual. Right. Right, right, right. Right. But I refer to transgender. It is an umbrella term. Um, now, a good analogy for understanding what it means to be transgender is to imagine opening a can of peas and finding sliced peaches inside. The inside is mismatched with the outside. And some view our condition as a birth defect and transitioning corrects that defect. Being transgender is not a choice just like sexual orientation. Um, both the medical and psychiatric establishments tried for decades to change both without success. Now, there are approximately 1.4 million transgender people in the United States, and this translates to 0.7% of the US population. So about 1% of the population is on the continuum of transgender has enough dichotomy that they seek gender uh, affirmation surgery. And that's the correct term now, right? Gender affirmation surgery versus- uh, Gender reassignment surgery, which okay. was an older term. Right. And people found it problematic because 
you're not reassigning someone's gender when they're transitioning to affirm that gender, to confirm who they already are and who they've always been. So that's and why when the they look in the like mirror, that. they don't see, they see a stranger looking back in the most on the, if you are a 10 and you gender identify as a one or vice versa, then the person looking back at you in the mirror, when you look in the mirror is literally a stranger that you don't know. Is that right? Uh, yes. I mean, for a long time, I would look in the mirror, especially when I was developing into womanhood. Um, the prettier I got, you know, I would look in the mirror and the reflection didn't make sense. And it startled me. And I would just say, who is this? It, and I just didn't know how to deal with it. And it made me very uncomfortable. When did that dichotomy start for you? Can you, or okay. did it start from the time you started looking in the mirror or was it during puberty? Do you, do you remember? I can remember when I knew I was gay. Okay. Um, now I know, I know where you're going with this. Now what you are referring to is gender dysphoria. Okay. Now for those who don't know, um, many transgender individuals have experienced some degree of gender dysphoria, which is an intense and persistent sense of distress or discomfort with their birth sex. Um, though gender dysphoria often begins in childhood, some people may not experience it until after puberty or much later. And that's how it was with me. Um, body development, when I reached puberty, my body went away that I didn't want. And it was very devastating to me. I was very uncomfortable the most with breast development, uh, menstruation, growing hips, a uh, softening of the features, a high voice. I wanted a deep voice. I wanted a flat chest. I wanted a beard and I didn't get it. <laughs> and I felt like my body was betraying me. And that was the experience of puberty for me. And I always had this male self and it just became more and more suppressed inside because of people's attitudes toward just gays and lesbians in the eighties, which was our time. And being gay was something to be um, ashamed of. It was socially acceptable to be homophobic. Right, right. That, God knows that's the, especially, I actually think, in the 80s, when you and I were in high school, was probably one of the worst times for homophobia in the history. Because before then, it seems to me it really wasn't dealt with, discussed, or even thought about that much. You know, mm -hmm. like, I, I just can't see the, the you know, Mayberries of the world, you know, yelling fag as you're playing on the playground. You know, they, they might say other things, but, but you know, when you and I were, were growing up right in this yeah. area, we went to Glendale yeah. High School, which is in Howard County. And right in this area, the vitriol and the, and the homophobia then was about as horrible as anything I have ever experienced in my life since then. Yes. Um, I remember reading newspaper articles in the early 80s that there were still police arrests in gay clubs. Yeah. Not for indecent behavior or exposure, but just for being there. You didn't even have to be holding hands with anyone. And there were still some conservative areas where it was, I don't know what the law was, but they treated it as illegal to be homosexual. Um, now, that's what the culture was for gays and lesbians. Um, now on TV and movies, um, gays were portrayed as neutered characters and were often the punchline to jokes. And the closest figures I had seen to trans people were in cross-dresser movies like Some Like It Hot, Tootsie, Victor Victoria, and just one of the guys. Now, each of these movies featured a character 
who use drag as a disguise to escape from their problems and start over. The overwhelming message of these movies was that when the going gets tough, get in drag and deceive people. <laughs> Some of these movies were funny. I, I have to admit it was, but it was also damaging and transphobic. These characters were deceptive and getting in drag was an act. They weren't really who they were pretending to be. It was pretend. And right. Uh, it, uh, it just wasn't what I was going through. It didn't make sense. It was, it was all pretend. It was deception. And all those movies, you know, the, the main characters in trouble gets in drag, starts over again. And that was the message that was sent that people really, the mainstream, that was all they heard about the closest thing to a trans person. And um, that was the message I got and it didn't make sense to me. So I went, I ended up just keeping my male side suppressed after just keeping it secret for so long, gave up and eventually adopted a feminine appearance and persona. And it was largely due to peer pressure and bullying, being told too many times you have such a pretty face. So this week, we really got to sit down with Miles and parse out what it means to be trans. And I hope it's helpful for you if you're growing up trans or if you have a family member who has come out as trans or even if it's just that you have some friends who are trans and you needed a little help understanding what that meant. Next week, we're going to go a little further in what it meant to grow up trans in the 80s in Baltimore, Washington metropolitan area. And we'll really take a deep dive into growing up trans in America. So please join me as we sit back down with Miles and we talk to one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. Meanwhile, have a great couple weeks. We'll talk to you soon.